My name is Kyle Willis, and this is Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. Welcome back to a new episode of Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. We are continuing our series of The Complete Entrepreneur. And in today's episode, we are jumping into the importance of fitness and health. I am really excited to dig into this topic and with our guest, Jason Priest, here in a moment, I'll intro him. Um, but I think what's so important is as an entrepreneur, it's so easy to be focused on the grind and the hustle. So easy to get dedicated to those 12 hour days, 14, 20 hour days, because you have so much you need to get done to launch your business, scale your business, that it's easy to neglect the self care. And I know that's what uh, place I've been in. I know that's been excuses I've made when I wanted to run from the gym. But as we hear from Jason today, I think he's going to share some real insights with us on how to simplify and make practical uh, fitness and health, the importance of it as an entrepreneur. Uh, and so first off, Jason, uh, I'm stoked to have you here. I'll give you a little intro before my first question, but I want to say I uh, really appreciate you being with us here today. Hey, thanks, Kyle. I appreciate you having me, man. Awesome, man. For those who don't know about Jason yet, we got connected through a mutual friend. And I really I fell in love with da uh, Jason's heart. And first off, with his company name, uh, I think it's, it's uh, I love the aspect that this company is called Dad Bod Health. And what he brings to the table as uh, a fitness professional, first off, he's a registered nurse, so he knows the importance of how our bodies work and, and the, the roles they play in fitness, much less he's also a personal trainer and a health coach and a fitness nutrition specialist. So he's got the full spectrum of how our bodies work, the role food plays, and how to not ex overextend yourself trying to become fit. Jason's extremely passionate about health and wellness. He was even featured in Men's Health for his own body transformation. I think he'll share a little bit of that story with us in a bit. He's a father and always tries to lead by example uh, what it means to be on that mission, uh, mission to change lives, missions to serve others, really help men become the best version of themselves. Jason, I think from our conversation is that you are on a mission to help a thousand, a million men become the leaders of their family in every aspect starting with their health and fitness. Yeah, man, that is absolutely right. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, we're, we're often told to set huge goals, right? Goals that you can only dream about. And so, yeah, my mission is to reach a million men, and that's a lofty mission, yeah. but it's what fuels my fire every day. And to be honest with you, man, uh, my, my main goal before my time is done is to make the largest impact possible on the obesity epidemic in our country. That's awesome. That's awesome. So if with this mission, that's, that's a great en endeavor. That's huge. I'd love to know where this began. Where, where did uh, your passion for fitness, or your, your mission, you talk about uh, your own transformation. Walk us through that a little bit. I love just hearing that origin story and the entrepreneurs that we're interviewing here in the series. Where did yeah. fitness and health become important for you? Yeah, for sure, man. So it's funny because I actually started, you know, I, I was actually very involved in, in fitness um, as a young kid. I played soccer for 15 years. And so, you know, all through elementary school, middle school, high school, that was my life was, you know, there was a time where I was on five soccer teams at once. And so that's all I knew. And, you know, as I as high school came to a close, um, I just didn't have the heart to keep playing. I didn't want to play college soccer, had, had some talk of that. And so I decided to, uh, decided to forego those offers and, and really just kind of live life for a little while. Well, yeah. living life for a little while, uh, you know, turned me down some, some not so positive roads, um, you know, have a, a little bit of a drug history in high school. Well, let's say a lot of a drug history. <laughs> um, and then shortly after high school, um, you know, I was, I was, I got in a comfortable relationship, started putting on some weight. Um, you know, I, I went to nursing school, graduated nursing school when I was 23 and started working in an intensive care unit. Yeah. So I spent the first six years of my career working in ICU and even as a, and I was overweight at the time, 
I was doing CPR on a lot of really young dudes. I mean, mm. we're talking, you know, late 30s and early 40s that were having massive heart attacks that only had a dad bot, right? Well, <clears throat> so it was kind of an eye opener for me, but I didn't really take action. My my wife and I got married when I was 25, and we moved off to a strange town. I'm in Dallas, and we moved off about three hours from where I'm at now. My wife is a pharmacist, and she was going to pharmacy school. And so this this town we moved to, I didn't know anybody. Like I was, I I became very depressed. I turned to alcohol. I turned to food, and was just like, I'm depressed. I don't know anybody. My wife's in school all day. I hate my job here at the time. And I'm like, what am I going to do? So I started playing golf and drinking beer and eating crappy food. Yeah. So started gaining more weight, gaining more weight. And I got up to about, uh, I'm 5'10". I got up to 232 pounds. And my doctors kept telling me, hey, man, your weight's trending in the wrong direction. Your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, you're going to end up on a bunch of medications or even worse, having your own heart attack if you don't get your act together. Hmm. And so we lived in this town for four years while she went to school and I did not start using the gym that we had access to until the last six months that we were there. So oh, wow. we wasted three and a half years of still to this day, one of the nicest gyms I've ever stepped foot in <laughs> and it was free for us because of her school. Yeah. So started using it for the last six months. Uh, I really basically got sick, became sick and tired of being sick and tired. I uh, didn't want to be out of breath after tying my shoes. I didn't want to be winded after one flight of stairs. I was sick of having low back pain and low energy levels and low libido, all the low stuff that comes along with being out of, overweight and out of shape. And so, yeah. you know, I really just kind of made the decision. I don't know that it happened one day, but I just got to the point where I was like, I cannot live like this anymore. It's time for change. Yeah. And so I got to work. Um, busted my tail and and really committed and went all with, all the way in. It wasn't, you know, because I'd been the guy that did the two or three months on and then three or four months off stuff before. Sure. Like, I'm done with this. I'm going to make this a lifestyle because I know that without my health, I'm not going to have much. And so this is going to be priority number one for me. And I went all in. That's the the transformation story that I was featured in Men's Health about. And, uh, you know, one thing led to the next and now I'm in the best shape of my life. I'll be 40 years old this year. I went from 232 and now I'm about 172. So huge, uh, huge change. Wow. Um, but yeah, so just to transition a little bit off of my transformation, then what I ended up doing was, uh, when I started my business, I took my experience as a registered nurse, my experience as a personal trainer. I worked in corporate wellness for a while doing some training. Uh, became a fitness nutrition specialist and was doing some health coaching, really just put it all together and said, you know what? My mission, my purpose is to go and help other men be able to do what I did so that they can be the leaders of their family and be around for their kids long term yeah. and be able to, you know, do the things that life offers us when we're fit and healthy. Yeah. That, that's, I want to I hit that element for a moment because I think, you know, one of the foundational elements of our podcast is on the marketing and mindset. And what you just touched on is such a, a mindset issue for men uh, where if they don't hit that spot where they basically say, fuck it, I got to get my life back in, in order. Uh, I'm not happy where I'm at. Things need to change. They just kind of get complacent. If they, uh, you know, it's kind of a, I'm, I'm in the middle, I'm complacent with my life. Um, or I'm already in good shape or, oh shit, things got to change. Sure. So when you're talking to men, when you're talking, to, uh, working with uh, the, especially from an entrepreneur perspective, what is it that you would say can help prepare men, can help uh, position them for the importance of fitness and health before they get to that, oh shit moment, my cholesterol's up, my, you yeah. know, my, my doctor's telling me things got to get in order. Yeah, there's a couple things that I want to add to that. You know, the first thing is that my, my first piece of advice is really, you know, take action before you have to. You know, we we often wait and we, we neglect our health to and it gets to a point where then we're told that we must take action. We have to take action. And we all we've all heard that the heart the, the longer that you wait, the harder it gets, right? So and, and I firmly believe that. I mean, as someone who's in the gym five times a week and eats really healthy the majority of the time, you know, I'm going to sit, I'm going to tell you guys, it's, it's, 
I've lived both lives. I've lived the, the overweight and out of shape life. And now I live the fit and healthy life. Sure. They're both hard, right? You have to choose your hard wisely. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that I love every workout that I do, or I love to go to the gym every time I do. But I realize that in order for me to do the things that I want to with my life, in order for me to wake up with soaring energy every day and not have low back pain and be able to continue to level up with my business, my health has to be a non-negotiable priority. And so oftentimes I see people become overwhelmed with the process because they wait too long and mm. they think that everything has to be perfect when in reality, that's so far from the truth. So in that aspect of, you know, things don't have to become perfect. They don't have, uh, where would you recommend people begin? You know, when people are saying, okay, either I'm head down to the plow, building my business or trying to scale it. Where, uh, and that, like, uh, that, as I mentioned earlier, that whole concept that we live in today of you're not a real entrepreneur unless you're hustle and grind. And this hustle, hustle, hustle attitude that it gets put on entrepreneurs as a label they must embrace, that it's so easy to say, okay, I'm going to forget it all. I'm, I may not go out on Friday nights. So I'm just going to work on my business. But that also means I'm not going to the gym Friday morning. Where should we begin in being able to prioritize health and fitness and make it become a non-negotiable, like you mentioned? Yeah. Well, so the last thing that you want to do, and, and this is something that you have to re realize and, and really keep telling yourself, especially if you're someone that, that has an uphill battle when it comes to health, but the last thing that you want to do is build your empire, grow your nest egg, grow your wealth, whatever you want to call it, only to turn around and have to give it all back to doctors and hospitals. Okay, so you're going to have to pay the price at some point. It's either going to be on the front end or the back end. If you pay for it on the front end by nourishing your body with fitness and the nutrition that you need in order to become the healthiest version of you, there's a lot less likely chance that you're going to have to pay for it at all, if at all, on the back end. If you choose to ignore it and you're going you're gonna to embrace the grind and you're going to hustle, 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 well, five years are going to go by, and then 10 years, and then 15, maybe 20. Yeah. And you've spent all this time growing this empire, and now you're on medications. You don't have the energy to, to continue to scale with your business. You don't have, the, you know, you don't have the, the wherewithal or the physical capability to continue to grow with your business, uh, and then you're in a world of hurt. And so I, I, there's, there's many billionaires and even a, a ton of millionaires that would gladly give their entire fortune back just to have their health back. So don't mm. become a statistic. But what I, what I have to, you know, and, and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs and, and what you have to realize is look at, take a look at some of the, some of the most well-known entrepreneurs in the world, right? And you can start talking about people like Ed Milet and Andy Frisella and, and uh, Gary Vee and, and, and throw all these guys out, right? All these big names, got Grant Cardone, all these big names out and what do all those guys have in common other than the financial aspect? Yeah. Every okay. single one of them prioritizes their health and talks about it often because they know that they don't, they don't just need to talk the talk, but they also need to walk the walk. And when they talk about it, it's reminding them, Hey, I need to take my health seriously or this hustle, 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 grind, grind, grind mentality to continue to scale. My company is going to be all for naught when I don't have my health anymore. Hmm. That's good. That's good. And so, you know, I, I think of that aspect of the, the importance of awareness, the importance of, uh, I like how you said, <laughs> don't become a statistic. And if I'm going to build this empire, do I want to give it up to doctors or elsewhere because of depreciating health at the end of this time? Years ago, I used to work as a marketing manager for a financial company, and they would use the analogy of climbing a mountain as part of, you know, building your, your nest egg, building your finances. And they would talk about how, you know, it's, it's so many people focus on climbing the mountain. That's, you know, your first four years of life, and that's where you're building the, the finances. But they say, you know, when it comes to uh, when it comes to climbing, the greatest risk of death, the greatest risk of injury is climbing back down the mountain where most people die on Everest, where most, most people uh, have injuries on Kilimanjaro, wherever those big mountains are, it's on the descent. And that importance of um, 
in your finances, having that plan for, for how you're going to live off that nest egg when the time comes for retirement. And I think I see very similarities with what you're talking about with fitness of, hey, in my 20s, my 30s, that's, that's uh, my time of you know, preparing for what life is going to be like at the, you know, when I retire uh, from, from building my empire. And so, and you think about young uh, entrepreneurs in their twenties, thirties, early forties, you know, I think of your company name, dad, bod health, uh, where it's become a little bit of this attitude of, Oh, it's okay to be pudgy. It's okay to, to have a, a, some roles. It's okay that, that there's something there. When, what is the aspect of, uh, of being aware of what's okay, what's not okay, and when someone should say, uh, I should be concerned about where, where, what my ascent is looking like up that mountain versus my descent? Yeah, that's a great question, man. And, and it's going to be really, it's different for everybody. You know, okay. I'm not going to sit here. I'm, I'm not the guy that's going to sit here and advocate that everybody has abs. I mean, that's just not reality. And, you know, most, most people don't you know, aren't interested in putting in the work that it takes to get abs. And I get that. Like, I totally understand that, you know, abs aren't for everybody. Their abs are literally a secondary piece of my, of, of why I work out. Like that's not a priority to me. Um, yes, I have a great physique, but my number one reason that I work out is for mental clarity. And number two is for energy. And so having those two things in my my life like if I didn't work out I wouldn't have meant I, I would go insane like it's hmm. just part of who I am now and so uh, to answer your question I think you have to really think about um, you know how you feel I firmly believe that most people especially men most men just want to feel better and it doesn't take a drastic overhaul of your health in order to do so and so it's it's finding things that are realistic for you to tackle at first like yeah you know, in, in uh, I have a, a, a community online, so it's called the Man Up Community, and I'll just give you an example. Last month, we did a water challenge, and the, the goal was to drink half your body weight in ounces of water uh, throughout the whole, each day throughout the whole month. Yeah. You would be shocked at the number of men that came back to me and said, Jason, I cannot believe how much more energy I have just by drinking this much more water. I'm drinking less soda. I'm drinking less energy drinks. I cannot believe how much this has impacted my life. And it's just a simple thing as, as drinking more water. And so I use that as an example because so often we're, we're thinking about the perfect plan. We want the perfect plan. But the, in reality, the, the, in, the most consistent, imperfect plan will work so much better than the inconsistent, perfect plan, right? So we wait for everything, to all the stars to align, when at the end of the day, it's just about taking action, jumping yeah. in, starting, taking the plunge, because ultimately getting started is the hardest part. And yeah. so we're always searching for motivation to get started, when in reality, the motivation doesn't come until you do get started. You're gonna just have to suck it up and force it the first few times to really start to feel better, and when you do, then the motivation is like, okay, I'm starting to feel better. Now I'm starting to look better. And now start, now people are starting to take notice. So there's something, I must be doing something right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, to add on to the dad bod thing, man, like the reason that the premise behind that name is that we are painting this, this picture as society that the dad bod is cute and cuddly. It's, it's acceptable. It's, it's, you know, even girls are saying now on social media that they provide, they pre uh, prefer a guy with a dad bod. And I know, and, and the reason I'm so passionate about my mission is that I've physically pumped on the chests of men who just had a dad bod. I'm telling you that even just a dad bod, any amount of visceral fat around our internal organs, especially for a dude, because that's where we accumulate fat, that's so close to your heart, man. And heart disease is the number one leading cause of death in our country. Wow. One out of every four deaths is directly related to heart disease. There's no higher risk of heart disease, developing heart disease than obesity. Wow. And so for us to say it's, it's okay to have some, some extra weight because that's what society is telling us. Well, society is not going to be there to rescue you when you're having a heart attack because you chose to ignore your extra weight a little too long. And so that's what I must caution people. Is. It's not like, you know deep down inside if you're healthy or not. If you look in the mirror and you, and I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't love yourself. I'm all about self-love, self-care, all that good stuff. 
you know, we should respect ourselves for who we are and where we're at in our journey. But if you honestly can look yourself in the mirror and you're 40 or 50 pounds overweight and tell yourself that you love that person for everything they're about, I honestly believe that you're lying to yourself because there's a more elite version of you out there mm. and you just got to find it. And finding it is not that hard if you just have an open mind and can learn to embrace the struggle because yeah. it's going to be a struggle regardless whether you're overweight and out of shape or whether you're fit and healthy. There is no easy life. Yeah. And that's the way that I like to look at it, man. I've, I've lived both and I've, I've chosen my heart wisely and, and that's the fit and healthy life. And uh, you know, one of the things I believe as an entrepreneur is that this is not a journey we are to walk alone. Uh, that it's, you know, when you think about the series, we're talking a variety of different topics from advertising, systems, fitness and health, copywriting, the, the various skills that go into it. And the reality is there's not one entrepreneur who can do it all themselves. And when it comes to fitness, you know, I, I, I've gone through a bit of my own journey. I, I need to go through a second one again. Um, but I went from two, 250 down to 190. Uh, okay. in my, my past and uh, went through that huge transformation, but I, I couldn't do it alone. And it was that accountability that really helped me, you know, hired a, a uh, fitness trainer in the beginning who had me in the gym and really brought me through what my process was like, helped me understand food in a different way, and then had, had some other people help surround me when I was hitting those plateaus of how do I break through. What is your, you know, you talk about this man up community. I, 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 I know you have an organization to, to help uh, men in this journey to get rid of the dad bod, to find their elite selves. What is that role of, of accountability, of surrounding yourself in community? Uh, where should someone begin in, in starting this journey, but not doing it alone? Yeah, man. And, and, and that's so huge. And I agree with you a hundred percent, man. Like if you, if you try to go at it alone, um, you know, it can be done, but leaning on others for support and accountability, the accountability piece is huge. And the reason it's so huge is because most of us aren't that great at holding ourselves accountable. But when we have other people who are on, you know, when I, when I talk about the man up community, this is a community of men and it's, yeah. you know, a lot of people would, would refer to it's, you know, just another Facebook group. I take it so seriously because these men are lifting each other up, man. Like the, the things that I'm, the transformations that I'm seeing take place in there and not just with weight, like people coming in and quitting smoking or drastically reducing their drinking hmm. or dialing in their sleep habits or whatever that, that is helping them become and, and work towards becoming the healthiest version of themselves. That's, that's why I'm so passionate about it when I talk about it, because the way that it's going and the way that it projects to go in the future, like there's going to be a lot of lives changed. And I love being a part of that. It helps me. And so to answer your question, uh, you know, find a community like this of, of, people who want to win, people who are looking to become the, the healthiest version of themselves. For some people, that might mean, you know, joining a gym and finding a, a group class to be a part of, right? Yeah. Show up, you go to a spin class, or you go to, you know, a, a body pump class, or whatever, whatever that looks like for you, and say you're going to go three times a week. Well, you've got these people now that are counting on you to show up, and you're counting on them to show up. You're like, we're in this together, right? So that that sense of encouragement and, and support and accountability is so huge for some people. But the reason why I feel like mine is, is going the way that it is, is we're such a social media driven society. And this gives people like, I literally check in on these people, these dudes every single day. It's like, all right. So like we do our monthly challenges. Last month was water. This month we're doing sleep. And you know, it's, it's called snooze for seven and I get it. Not everybody's supposed to sleep for seven hours. But the premise of the challenge is figure out where you feel most well-rested yeah. and dial that in and be laser-focused on it. And when you do, it's going to have a trickle-down effect in the rest of your life. You know, mm -hmm. the issue with a lack of sleep leads to high levels of cortisol for men and then a very, very difficult time to lose weight. And so dialing in these, these core foundational pieces of health like water and sleep and stress management. We could talk about diet and exercise all day, but oftentimes we ignore some of these other core pieces. That's huge. So, yeah. And so having the support of people that, 
you know, that like-minded men that are really just trying to, to level up and all, because a lot of these guys are business owners. There's a lot of entrepreneurs in there that they realize that they, you know, health needs to move further up the to totem pole. You know, I, I use this a lot, but you know, when you can make fitness, nutrition, sleep, stress management, when those things become non-negotiable priorities, just like brushing your teeth or taking a shower, then the sky becomes the limit for you. Like yeah. we live in a, a society that's all about hygiene, right? But why aren't we prioritizing things that are much more important for us than hygiene? Like most people won't go a day without brushing their teeth or taking a shower. True. But those same people that wouldn't, wouldn't give those things up, won't get their ass to the gym or won't do a home workout or won't eat an extra salad each week or, or whatever that looks like for them to get a little healthier and, and actually potentially extend their lives. Brushing your teeth and taking a shower aren't doing shit for your long-term <laughs> longevity. Now we can get into yeah. cavities and all that nonsense, <laughs> but you get it, right? Yeah. Like, why are we, why are those two things held at a higher standard for, for us as humans when you go back and look at, you know, the cavemen that were walking the earth and hunting for their food and gathering their food, they weren't taking a shower or brushing their teeth. And they were some of the fittest and healthiest people because they were active. They sure. were eating real whole foods. They were sure. eating nutrient dense foods. And so, you know, not everybody needs to live like a caveman, but those non-negotiable priorities got to become way higher in your book in order to become the person that you want to become. So I love to make this real practical, you know, as we're wrapping up here with this aspect of, under, you know, I think we've hit hard the importance of fitness and health, understanding how critical it is uh, for the entrepreneur. You know, I, I love what you said earlier, that aspect, if you're going to spend all this time building your empire, do you really want to give it away at the end? And for those listening right now that are saying, okay, he made a good point. You know, I think of myself, it's like, I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to make all this effort to climb up the mountain and then have to, you know, my way down, trip and fall and have it all be for naught. I don't want to have to, uh, you know, get diabetes and then say, oh shit, now everything is, is, is waste. Where would you recommend someone of, you know, of just kind of make, if they ever make one decision today, two decisions today or whatever it might be. You, know, you talked about sleep. You talk about water. Uh, we haven't hit too much about fitness or health, um, practical elements of it. W what would you say is kind of the, Hey, my first thing I recommend when people uh, sign up with me or first thing I've seen is the, what makes the biggest impact in the life of uh, especially a man, uh, their, their health is this element. What might that be to begin with? Yeah, man. Um, you know, and, you, you mentioned the support and the community and the accountability and that kind of stuff. So I definitely think getting something like that on your side, uh, you know, and, and not to push the man up community. There are a lot of, there are a lot of options out there. So sure. I think figuring out who's going to support you in this journey and where can you go to lean on other people to help you in those down times? Because yeah. even if you make a conscious decision to go all in, you're going to have times where you're going to struggle a little bit. Uh, even I do as, as someone who's in the shape that I'm in, you know, leaning on my community when I'm in there and, and seeing the, all these guys crush their workouts and I'm thinking about skipping the gym today. It's like, okay, wait a second here. Like mm -hmm. I can't, you know, th it, that's not possible. Like I got to get my shit done. So the, the number one thing is, is find a support measure that can help you along your journey. But, you know, the, the most practical advice that I can give you is, is just make the decision to start, right? Like, okay, I'm not going to do a drastic overhaul, but I'm going to keep an open mind about health and fitness, and I'm going to start putting some things in place that are going to, that are going to make me feel better first. Like somebody that's really struggling, yeah. all they want to do is feel better, yeah. okay? And so, you know, we could, you can sit here and list out several different goals and, and figure out which ones are going to be most realistic to you and everybody's situation is a little bit different but you know working on increasing your water intake and getting away from some of the sugary beverages the energy drinks the sodas uh, working on getting a little bit more greens into your life you know a little bit more vegetables into your life going through a drive-through less you know trying to get some of that fast food and those processed carbohydrates cut out of your life you know, getting active, getting a little bit, not everybody's a gym guy, not everybody's a home workout guy, but how about just taking a walk? The mental process 
behind walking three times a week for 10 minutes is the exact same as walking five times a week for 45 minutes. But we all have this mental barrier that prevents us from just taking the plunge. I guarantee you, if you walk three times a week for 10 minutes for two weeks, that third week won't be in, it won't just be 10 minutes. You're going to start walking a little bit more and a little bit more because your body's going to reward you. And that's what you have to realize is like, once you buy into the struggle and you were like, okay, I know this is going to suck in the beginning, but if I can just start to build some momentum and build some confidence, then a confident man with a plan becomes an unstoppable force. So I say, take action before you have to, before your doctor's saying, all right, it's time for some medications. But literally try to wrap your head around one, two, or three things a week that you can do that aren't going to overwhelm you, that aren't going to cause you to be frustrated and, and throw in the towel early, that are, that are very accomplishable goals. So for you, it might be, I'm going to take three walks this week. They're going to be 10 minutes. I'm going to yeah. aim half my body weight in ounces of water, and I'm going to eat you know, an extra vegetable each day. Something like that. Like those yeah. aren't overwhelming goals. Yeah. You do that and build momentum, man. And then the sky becomes the limit because again, your body is absolutely good. Your body's waiting to reward you. Most people don't realize how well their body is, how good their body is designed to feel. And when yeah. that happens, it, that's a huge motivator to keep going because you're now you're like, well, shit, I'm feeling good. There's no way I'm stopping now. Yeah, I love that, man. That, that's huge. And, you know, I'm no, I welcome self promotion when I think can really serve our audience. Uh, so I know you said there's a lot of great places out there, and I agree there, there are many, but I think in those hearing you today, so man, that's, that's what I want. That's what I love is just someone who can encourage me, challenge me, <clears throat> prepare me without it having to be here's the 20 things that you have to change today. So, in that, you know, first off, let us know uh, where's the best way to follow up with you, learn about the Man Up community, see if it's the yeah. right fit for us, and see if we're the right fit for you. Oh, 100%, man. So to join the Man Up community, man, or, or to at least see, see more information, you just go to themanupcommunity.com, www.themanupcommunity.com. Um, just so your listeners know, man, the everything that's included in this thing, I mean, it, it's – it's literally a no brainer. And I wanted to give, I wanted to give even the, you know, the janitor at Walmart who really wants to get healthy, but just doesn't have finances to hire a trainer or that just doesn't really know where to start. Yeah. I wanted to eliminate all barriers. And so that's what I did. And so when you get in there, you get access to the dad bod health fitness app. It's got an entire library of workouts, everything from beginner to advanced gym, mm -hmm. home, you name it. It's all there for you. Uh, that app tracks everything. You're doing your weights, your progress photos, your body stats. It integrates with my fitness pal. Like all your fitness and nutrition can be kept in one spot. Yeah. And in the man up community itself, in the group and the file section, if you go into the file section in the group, it's loaded with custom meal plans that I actually went in and built that align with my nutritional beliefs. There's meditation guides, stress management resources, just a lot of value. Every It's a self-service community, obviously, but everything that you need is at your fingertips. And awesome. then, you know, this great group of guys to help lift you up. So, so yeah, that's the manupcommunity.com. Um, and then, uh, you know, the best place to probably follow me and kind of see what I'm up to is probably Instagram. Okay. And that's at dadbodhealth. Um, and then I'm just Jason Priest on Facebook, the dude with the green shirt. Um, and then my website is dadbodhealth.com. Okay. So anywhere you go, uh, those are all great places, but for someone who's just looking to get started and just looking to get around healthier dudes, yeah. the man community for $9 and 97 cents a month is just the fitness app alone is, is all the value you need at that price point. But the community itself, like I can't put a price on it. Yeah. And, and I've, I've had so many people come to me and say, dude, I can't believe this is only nine, nine, nine 97 a month. And I'm like, well, I can because that's exactly what I want to hear. <laughs> I'm all about impact, man. And I just wanted to give play, men a place to go to feel comfortable about sharing their wins, their losses. You know, men don't like to talk about their health very much, right? Yeah. It's, kind of a, it's kind of a taboo thing. We're, we're taught that we're the leaders and that we've got to hide this and everybody's got to become the priority over us. When I, in all actuality, like if we're not prioritizing ourselves – how are we going to take care of anybody else? And that's, that's what it all comes down to. So that's, that, those are the best places to find me. 
Awesome. Awesome. And for those listening who didn't capture the URLs, we'll have them all in our show notes at mfrrpodcast.com. Uh, we'll make sure to link to everything Jason has shared here. But Jason, this has been extremely insightful, very practical for us being able to understand not only the role that fitness plays, but then where are some simple places we can begin to incorporate that into our life, prioritize it. And I love the community aspect because I feel it's so important that we don't do this alone. Yeah, no, I 100% agree, man. And I appreciate you having me on the show today. Likewise. Thank you, man. Hope you have a great rescue day to all our listeners. We'll have another episode next week carrying on this uh, complete entrepreneur series. Thank you for listening today. Hey, I want to thank you so much for listening to this episode of Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. If you heard something today that you would like to follow up on and be able to connect with us, connect with our guest, we will have their contact information as well as any links to the resources they talked about from Facebook groups, their website, any type of offers that they gave on our website at mfrrpodcast.com. Once again, that is mfrrpodcast.com. Join us there. I'd love to keep the conversation going, and you'll be able to get all of our show notes as well as links that the guests spoke about, so that way we can really serve you. Really do appreciate you spending time with us today in this episode. Hope you have a great rest of your day.